Okay, so this is mine in London's model project. The Malthusian model is in the population unit. It stated that food supply grew linearly or arithmetically while population grew exponentially or geometrically. Few food production grows linearly or arithmetically, population grows exponentially, and people must consume food made in their own country. Criticisms are that new technology allows food supply to also grow exponentially and provide for the growing population, so the model does not apply today. And the related vocab is exponential, which means increase that becomes more rapid, and then arithmetic, which means progression from one step to another in a single series of steps. And then that's the illustration of it. Uh, demographic transition is in the population unit as well, and it was developed to explain and predict changes in population growth. It assumes that economics drive demographic change and that all countries will pass through all stages. It measures the crude birth rate, crude death rate, and the rate of natural increase. And it has five stages. One is low growth, high birth rate, high death rate, low uh, rate of natural increase. There's lots of disease, famines, and wars characterized by subsistence farming, and the economy is not industrialized. Stage two has high growth and high birth rates and declining death rates, which causes the exponential growth. And then stage three has moderate growth with declining birth rates and steady death rates. And then women have more job opportunities, so they focus on that instead of kids. Four has low growth because it has a low crude birth rate and a low death rate, so they're pretty much equal. And it has a low rate of natural increase. And stage five is negative growth with aging population in countries like France, Germany, and Japan. And then criticisms for that was based on English transition, where they had a really small population, so it might not be representative of other countries, and it doesn't account for immigration. And related vocabs, carrying capacity, which is the largest population and environment of a particular area can support, and the dependency ratio, the number of people under 15 or over 65 compared to the rest of the population. The gravity model is also in population. It's a mathematical prediction of how much interaction will occur between two places based on the population size of each place and the distance between them. And then that's the formula. Places with larger populations that are closer together will have more interaction, while two places with smaller populations that are very far from each other will have less interaction. The assumptions are that migration is directly related to population size and inversely related to distance. The criticisms are, or well, it applies less today because modern transportation makes transportation easier, so people are more willing to travel long distances. And the related model is Ravenstein's Laws of Migration, because certain laws apply to the gravity model, which are that most migrants travel short distances and migrants who move longer will go to bigger cities. And the related vocab is voluntary migration. People decide to move permanently to a new location. And then the Ravenstein model is also in population, and it has five laws about migration patterns. And it's that <laughs> every migration flow generates a return or counter migration. The majority of migrants move a short distance. The migrants who move who move longer distances tend to choose big city destinations. Urban residents are less migratory than rural residents. Families are less likely to make international moves than young adults. And it somewhat applies today, but the number of women migrating is growing. But Ravenstein said young men are the most common migrants, but young women are becoming more common. And the related model is the gravity model because evidence of loss two and three can be seen in that model. The related vocab is migration, which is the permanent movement of people, can be voluntary or involuntary. And then step migration is a series of shorter, less extreme migrations from a person's place of origin to a final destination, like moving from farm to a village to a town and then to a city. The von Thunen models in the agriculture unit. It describes agricultural land use. Uh, most intensive practices are located closest to the market, and as distance increases, the processes become more extensive. From closest to farthest from the market, the activities include dairy farming, lumbering, grain farming, and livestock raising. Because land values decrease as you move further from the market area, extensive farming is more common because it requires more land, so it would save money to go to a place where land is cheaper since you need more of it. And then intensive practices require less land, so they're located in places where land is more expensive. And also the products of dairy farming can spoil quickly and need to be closer to the market so they don't spoil and not be able to make profit. The assumptions are that all the terrain is the same, there's equal access to transportation, there's no trade between states, and all farmers want to make a profit. Criticisms are that the model doesn't apply today because improved technology of refrigerated trucks allows for the transportation of products without them spoiling, and technology has also improved trade and the speed of transportation from farm to market. 
The related vocab is intensive agriculture, which is type of agriculture in which farmers must expend a relatively large amount of effort to produce maximum yield. And it uses a small amount of land with a large amount of labor. And then extensive agriculture uses a large amount of land with a smaller amount of labor. And yeah. And then the Weber model is in the econ unit. And it attempts to describe the industrial location of certain industries based on the raw materials and the final products. It suggests that a company building an industrial plant needs to take into consideration with raw materials and product. Um, assumptions are that agglomeration business and industries are attracted to big cities because it is a center of commerce and trade as well as a dense populated area. Transportation, agglomeration, labor are the most important costs to an industry. The related vocab is weight gaining industry, which is an industry in which the final product weighs more than the raw materials used to make it. An example of that would be automobiles. And then a weight reducing industry where the final product weighs less than the original raw materials. And an example would be paper mills. An agglomeration is when businesses locate close to each other to help each other increase profits by creating larger markets where customers from one industry can go to another. The heartland theory is in the political unit. It says that whoever controls the heartland, which is interior Russia, can control the world. There's no assumptions. And the related model is the rimland theory. It's the opposite of heartland. It says that whoever controls the coast controls the world. The Rimland theory in the political unit says that whoever controls the coast can control the world. Again, no assumptions. And the related model is the heartland theory because it's the opposite and states that controlling the land or interior Russia helps you control the world. The world systems theory is in the econ unit and it ranks countries into three categories. Core, semi periphery, periphery. Core countries are wealthy, urbanized, and take advantage of poorer countries. Periphery countries are poor, not industrialized, and exploited by core countries. Semi-periphery countries are somewhere between and have industrialized economies. Um, core countries often locate industries in semi-periphery countries. And in this model, the roles of countries were put in place during colonization will not change due to the exploitation of economic resources in poor countries, which prevents them from developing further. It assumes that all states will remain core, periphery, or semi-periphery and will not move up in economic standing. The Ross style models really exist is the opposite of the world system theory. It says that states can move up in the economic ranks. The related vocab is core, which is wealthy, deindustrialization, urbanized, stages four and five, tertiary economic activities, and long life expectancies. Uh, periphery, which is poor, agriculturally based, subsistence farming, stage two, semi periphery, industrial, secondary economic activities, stage three, and then structuralist, which says all countries will remain at the same level of development. Um, the Ross style model is in the development unit, or econ, whichever you want to call it. Um, all states go through the five stages of development, which are traditional, preconditions to take off, take off, drive to maturity, and high mass consumption. In traditional, the dominant economic activity is subsistence farming. The social structure is rigid and people resist change. In the preconditions to take off stage, the country becomes more open and flexible through progressive leadership. In the take off stage, countries industrializing and industry grows substantially due to new technologies like in the Industrial Revolution. And then during the drive to maturity stage, the new technologies diffuse, population grows slows, and international trade expands. And in the last stage of high mass consumption, the majority of workers enter the tertiary sector and receive high, high incomes. It assumes that all, stages, all states go through all stages. And it, the criticisms are that not all countries develop in the same way. And some states define development differently and therefore, Rostow's definition of development may not fit their definition. Wallerstein's world system theory is the opposite of Rostow, and it's because it's a structuralist model, while Rostow is liberal, which says all countries can reach the same level of development. Hoteling is in the econ unit. It deals with locational interdependence, and that the location of industry can be understood with reference to other industries of like kind. Two similar vendors will locate near each other and maximize profits. If shops are found at the same halfway point, one serves the north half and the other serves the south half. Assumptions that the products the vendors are selling are equal in price and quality. The related model is Weber because both relate to the location of an industry relative to certain factors. And then the related vocab is locational interdependence, which means the idea that industries are located depending on where other industries are located. I'm stuttering like crazy. The concentric zone model is in the urban unit. And it suggests that there are concentric rings centered around the CBD. The center is CBD. Second ring is the residential deterioration and erosion by business. 
Third ring is adequate homes that house the blue-collar labor force. Fourth ring includes middle-class residents, and the fifth ring is the suburbs. It assumes uniform topography and equal transportation. It does not apply today due to more adequate public transportation. And the related model is sector, because both involve the classification of social structure, just based on different things. And then the related vocab is the suburbs, where wealthier, higher-class residents lived, and they have uh, more expensive land. The sector model is also in the urban unit, and it says that social structure, um, it uses social structure to determine neighborhoods, but it's based on class, but describes social structure based on transportation systems rather than distance from the CBD. And the city grows outward from the center. It assumes uniform topography and still applies in cities like Chicago. The related model is concentric zone because both use social structure and class, but sector describes structure based on transportation rather than distance from the CBD. And related vocab is public transportation, which is like buses, trains, subways, other forms of transportation that charge set fares, run on fixed routes, and are available to the public. Multinuclei model um, is in the urban unit, and it illustrates a city where the CBD loses dominance to other areas of business. It's the most modern and accurate model. Every urban area has its own CBD. This model is the most modern, accurate city model and can be seen in cities like Los Angeles. Uh, related vocab is CBD is a place where business, retail stores, offices, and cultural activities are located. Central Place Theory is also in urban. It shows relationships between urban areas, including their hinterlands and the range the individual cities need to maintain their size, which larger cities need larger ranges and hinterlands. Urban businesses need a threshold to be profitable. The size of hinterlands range and thresholds depends on the size and products in question. Size of the cities and products in question. Um, the assumptions are uniform topography, equal distribution of transportation systems, and people will travel the least distance to meet their service needs. Still applies today because urban areas still need hinterlands and range to maintain their size. Products still need thresholds to be successful. Related vocab is range, which is the maximum distance people are willing to travel to purchase a good or partake a service, and varies depending on the product. Threshold is the minimum number of customers needed to, for a product to succeed. Hinterland or market area is an area in which a product, urban area, commercial outlet has influence, which is what causes the hexagonal shape of the model. The Latin America City model is also an urban. It shows the blend of traditional Latin American culture with forces of globalization. CBD is divided to traditional market sector and more modern sector is primary place of business, employment, and entertainment. Commercial spine is surrounded by upper class residential sec sector. There is also an industrial park and gentrification zone. In this model, the further away from CBD you are, the less wealthy you are. The disamenity sector is the poorest part of the city where regular city services are not offered. Southeast Asia model, also in urban, says that land use pattern shows land use patterns in typical Asian city, which are some of those popular cities in the world. Focal points, old colonial port and the commercial districts that surround it. The rest of the city projects outward from the port zone. No formal CBD, but there are elements of the old CBD as evidenced by separate clusters surrounding the port, hybrid structure of sectors and zones. Western commercial zone, government zone, late residential sector, stuff like that. African city model, also an urban. It's the model of typical African city, which are some of the most fastest growing cities in the world. Um, these cities are unindustrialized, which means most people are farmers. Has a visible colonial imprint. Three CBDs, which are colonial, traditional, and informal market zone. Surrounded by neighborhoods and ringed with satellite townships, which are also called squatter settlements. And related vocab is the informal economy, which are economic activities not taxed by the government and not included in the state's GDP. And that's it. So, thanks.